I sit on the Long Island Railroad in Penn Station. Kareem texts me. Now, remember, I met him drunk in a McDonald's six months prior. We had never actually hung out after that. He goes, hey, Jason, are you in the city? Yes, I'm in the city. I'm here at Beach Cafe with George Santos. You want to come say hello? I'm thinking, this is before he was arrested. This is before he was ousted from Congress. This is just he was a controversial congressman at the time. And I'm like, damn, I love a good, colorful character. Jim Brewer. 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 Hey, this is Jim Brewer. Guess that song, Mike. Oh, dude, I can't hear you. Rain and blood. Get... What? No. Ready? Ready? Wait. Uh. Bang! Bang! Wait! 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 Bang! 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 Go! 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 You don't know that song? Fuck! It's uh, it's Metallica. Ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, it's older than the Black hot. Album. Ooh. Wait, what? What album? It's older than the Black Album. Yes. Oh, yes, it is. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun. Oh, man. That's <laughs> all I'm giving you. Oh, I can't. You know what? We'll let the listeners figure it out. Here you go. This is just for the listeners. Ready? <laughs> that's it they'll figure it out they'll figure it out you'll figure it out when it's over that's gonna be part of the new show too on patreon too you're gonna have to guess dude i like it because i hear it i i'm like i know this i just can't i can't get to the lyrics i'm like uh, yeah and that's the only part you get you just get yeah I'll you get it you get see i keep saying that's all you get and then i do more <laughs> cheating for you yeah. uh cool so i have a fun guest uh, this fun guest, I don't think the fun guest can also guess what I'm doing. That I can assure you. I don't see that person as a metal guy, but he has been uh, doing stand-up for a while. He's been on the show before. Uh, I met him, I think, at a Reawaken, yeah, a Reawaken American tour. And he was absolutely, th this guy, his imp I mean, stand-up's great. His impressions are out of control. Um, and that now he's branching out, like he's starting to go in elevators and stuff like that, and ask awkward questions, which is kind of funny. <laughs> Have you seen the mic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, awkward ask questions on an elevator. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do we have one of those clips? Yeah, yeah, I got one. Yeah, this is what this is. What, I think one of them he went up to like Jewish people and he asked them. Yeah, he goes in. <laughs> I'm so. Yeah, I want to ask him like how people react to this right normally. folks here it is you're on america's new favorite show like awkward Scoop. ask questions on an elevator question number one trump or biden awkward better for the country ask questions neither neither okay abortion yes or no it is guy with no. nothing no. to do it. okay um is building a wall racist no no okay welcome guys come on I'm sorry. oh he's I'm coming back up he's, he's getting off on the wrong floor this show tends to throw people off a little bit all right, guys. Okay, uh, question number whatever. I lost count. Uh, Kanye <laughs> or Drake? Neither. Neither. Wow. Okay. Oh, here's the big one. Who's the most attractive person on this elevator? 
None of us. <laughs> I like that Ooh. one. You know what? If we could all actually this man. This man. <laughs> wait, sir. We're gonna wait, 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 sir. For being the most attractive person on this elevator, you're gonna get a scratch off ticket, <laughs> sir. Here you go. Look at this. You could win five thousand dollars. There you go. You. Oh, and he's got his nails did too. What else? Um. Oh, can a kid change genders at the age of three? <laughs> no. Okay. I like and this no guy. Other ages, no. Okay. Now I gotta get off. Now I gotta get off. Okay, get off. man. I'm gonna go. Take care. Yeah, I gotta get off. He's done. He's done with the game show. Um. I know he's performing in uh, Addison, Texas, too. He's going to be at the Improv, so you want to check out Jason Scoop. I guess jasonscoop.com. Uh, and also, have, there's one other. This guy, it doesn't matter if you like Trump. He's tr I, I don't think anyone does a better Trump. I've seen Shane, Shane Gillis does a great Trump. Does a great Trump. His new special is so funny. Shane Gillis' new special is so funny. Um, we found his uh, Bill Burr also. This guy does Bill Burr. He does Sebastian Maniscalco. Jason Scoot. What? Look, look at his Bill Burr. This this kills me. This freaking kills me. Bill Burr here. You know, I'm sitting there at the UFC. You know, getting ready for the fight to start. You know, and then walks Orange Hitler. All right, Waltz is in. You know, and I'm minding my business. You know, I don't care who you voted for. You know, I happen to vote for, uh, you know, Sleepy Joe. You know, so I'm just sitting there. But then my wife. Decides to flip him off, and I turn around. I'm like, you're, you're, you're fucking with our money now, all right? Because if you do <laughs> all right? <laughs> it's brutal. Do you have any of his Trump stuff? This Trump stuff so freaking funny. Do you have any? Yeah. You like that? Or Sleepy Joe? What do you think? Sleepy Joe. Sleepy Joe. That one likes Sleepy Joe, sir. How about you? Me or Sleepy Joe? Can't answer. I'm sorry, bro. He can't answer. That means me. How about this one? Waiting for her delicious food. Miss, what do you think? Me or Sleepy Joe Biden? What do you think? He even stands like him. Me? Ah, come here. Come here. We love these gloves. Look at those gloves. Staying away from the germs, right? We love her. Unbelievable. And look back in that kitchen. They all vote Trump in the kitchen. They might not admit it, but they all love me. And we love the kitchen, too, because they make the beautiful, delicious food. Look. That's right, Danny T. We win so bigly with the African Americans. Unbelievable. <laughs> All right. Uh, you're going to see him uh, January 30th. I think his show start in Addison Improv. I actually played the Addison Improv. It's a great room. It's a really good room. Uh, the people that run it are really cool. So check him out. And uh, we have Jason here for you. Jason Scoop is here. All Look right. at him. He's Hooking all excited. I had to go phone. I am very excited. I am thrilled. When, when are you going to when are you going to Texas? Uh Tuesday, January 30th, Addison Improv. Super yeah. excited. Uh, you know, you were showing a bunch of my impressions, but you, my secret weapon is the first impression I ever learned. And that was uh that was uh, this guy, George W. Bush. I gotta tell you, I always wanted to join the uh, the Bruniverse. <laughs> <laughs> Al Qaeda, Jim Brewer. I loved him at uh, what do you call it? Uh, something about uh, being baked halfly. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, man. I was watching your Chappelle impression. Your Chappelle impression inspired my impression. Damn, man. My car got yeah, you stolen. Gotta... Bet you it was one of them I... damn he sees. Damn it. I just I... put gas in that motherfucker. That's right. Damn. That's the key to punch the air. Make a declarative yes. statement like that. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, so have you been have you been to that improv yet? I have not. I have not. So I'm super pumped. Are you just starting to I'm starting to see your following is starting to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. Uh clearly it's through the the Trump impression, yes. I'm assuming, which is kind of cool because then they come in through that gate. And then they then they're discovering your stand up and your other impressions. So when you're when you're at your shows, are you doing all the impressions too? Are you do, or are you just doing strictly stand up? What are you doing? Well, when you, when I'm you... a big believer as a comedian who also does impressions. The impression does not make the joke. The joke makes the impression. Right. My biggest pet peeve in the entire world 
is an impressionist who starts doing stand up. And I want to address that because I, I, I did stand up. I know I've what done you mean. Yeah, I've done stand up for 10 years. OK, yeah. then the pandemic happened. Everything was shut down and I started doing Internet stuff. The re I was doing less stand up. Now I'm accelerating back into stand up. The thing is, the Internet stuff was it was hello, this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. OMG, yes. Becky. So I leaned into it. You look at Cameo, you look at everything. But now I just signed on with the great management team and I'm doing stand up again. And so my point is, I write jokes. And if the impression fits into the joke, it's got to be baked in perfectly, you know? And ah, yeah. So who do you mind me asking the management team? Oh, so it's a new company actually called Vizzy Media. Um, and uh okay yeah yeah how i got involved with them is is is, is pretty interesting um it, it's these two guys kareem and michael they started it um i met kareem uh the day that i met rudy giuliani just totally by accident i happened to be at a bar rudy giuliani was at the bar my what? friend goes go yeah, oh yeah oh yeah my friend goes where, go where is this is this long this island is Has where, no haswell greens in manhattan okay so I do the impression with Rudy. This is back in August of 2022. And you had no clue he was in there? I had no clue. This is random right, so you, chance. You walk in the bar and there's Rudy Giuliani. Well, Rudy, okay. Rudy walks past me. He's leaving. Yeah. And my friend goes, go in there and, 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 and approach him. I'm like, ah, I don't want to do it. My friend said, you have to. This is fate. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. He kind of peer pressured me into it. And I went out and Rudy was really cool. I think he'd had a few drinks, so he was extra he was extra, yeah. you know, relaxed. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I did my Trump. So we left that bar. I went into a McDonald's. Now, I don't even eat McDonald's, but I was with a friend of mine who likes McDonald's. And I bump into this kid, this little scrawny kid. He looks tiny, but he's he's uh, like uh, he ran for Congress. And his name is Kareem. And he's like, hi, I follow you. I'm a big fan. I got to ask you, do you do you like Trump? Are you a supporter or, or do you just like or, or do you just make fun of him? I'm like, look, 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 look. I, funny comes first, but I do. I am a. I like Donald Trump. I'm a fan of sure. his. I voted sure. for him. I'll vote for him again. But you know, the funny comes first. So I meet this guy, and we 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 exchange information, and we stay in touch through DMs. You know, every now and again for the next six months. Yep. Then, um, I had a friend who's a friend of a friend who's sort of a dark figure. He's into booze. He's into lots of bad things, and he's like, "Come hang okay. out. Okay. Come hang out." And I was like, I can't meet up with this guy because he's bad news. So it's I remember bad, yeah. forcing myself. I lived in Long Island at the time. Now I'm living in Manhattan. I remember literally dragging my feet step after step. I said, I can't meet up with this guy. He's bad news. He does drugs. He drinks too much. I got to get to the Long Island Railroad. And I just was telling myself, I was literally screaming out to the public. I was like, I can't go back to people were looking at me like I was crazy. And I said to myself, yeah. something good will come out of this. Okay. I sit on the Long Island Railroad in Penn Station. Kareem texts me. Now, remember, I met him drunk in a McDonald's six months prior. We had never actually hung out after that. He goes, hey, Jason, are you in the city? Yes, I'm in the city. I'm here at Beach Cafe with George Santos. You want to come say hello? I'm thinking, this is before he was arrested. This is before he was ousted from Congress. This is just he was a controversial congressman at the time. And I'm like... Damn, I love a good, colorful character. I love a crazy per So, but I even considered, I said, it is late. Should I just go home? And I was like, no, something told me, no. Get out, go to Beach Cafe and meet George Santos. Yeah. So I meet George Santos and I'm doing all the, I'm doing George, I'm doing Trump. I'm doing Sleepy Joe, I'm doing, uh, what we need to do is sign a bill. I'm doing, uh, there is no such thing. I'm doing all the, I'm doing Kramer. Hey, Jerry, la da 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 I'm doing Sebastian. So now George Santos, the lying congressman, is dying laughing. He's just keeled over. Oh, my God, Jason, you're so funny. Da, 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 da. He goes, we got to stay in touch. I'm like, sure, George. So he gives me his phone number. The next day, he invites me to the Capitol. Monday, I, 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 he's giving me the, the congressman, the guy who got kicked out, is giving me the tour of the Capitol. So I started hanging out with him a little bit, got to know Kareem a little bit better. And... Um, and, you know, Kareem is a young guy and he's so successful and he works his butt off and he puts me in touch with this other social media guy. He's killing it. And, you know, it was just casual, casual, casual. And the day he offered to manage me, 
I, I kept thinking about both him and this kid, Michael, and I'm like, they're, they're both, I'm 32. I look younger, I'm 32. I said, they're both in their early 20s and they're crushing it. They're just absolutely crushing it. And then I got off the phone organizing a gig in Ohio mm-hmm. and the guy was like, yeah, well, you, you, you'd be even easier if you had a manager. And I just said to myself, you know what? Watch, watch somebody's gonna offer to manage me literally like today. I just, just laughed to myself. I'm like, cause that's how things just go. You know, when you're in alignment, yeah, yeah. when you're in alignment, yeah. when you're not yeah. in alignment, nothing works out. But when you're in alignment, things tend to work out. So that night, later that night, I'm putting together my Eiffel Tower Lego brick set, okay? And I happen to be on YouTube watching a documentary on Michael Jackson, of all people. I know you're a metal guy, but I, I like pop. No, and I don't and, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you were right. I don't know metal. So I'm listening to this documentary on Michael Jackson about his off the wall album that Spike Lee directed. And I'm at a particular part where he's like, and I had to fire my dad as my manager. And I was looking and we went to Epic Records and I found a manager there. And then my phone goes, bing. At this very moment, after I went for a walk and I was thinking about Karim and I'm like, these guys, are, they're good to be connected with. And now I'm listening to the Michael Jackson Spike Lee documentary. He's like, and I found a new manager and I knew I'd be the biggest sell the most records in the world. And then Kareem goes, Jason, I'm curious, do you have a manager? And I go, huh. I go, well, I was working with this guy for a while. And then we yeah. kind of amicably went ways for, you know, friendly, friendly. We sure. parted ways. And he goes, um. And he goes, well, me and Michael are starting this company. And uh, we had a little meeting the next day and we worked out some terms and conditions and uh, things have been going really well. And, cool. I, and I, yeah, yeah. So long okay. story short, long story short. So, all right. So or when long you do your long. Yeah, no, no, no. It's, it's a story. So with the story, do you book your own? Do you have an agent that's booking this stuff or do you reach out or they reach out? I'm assuming they, they're, they're not bookers. They're more. Uh, social media. Or yeah, they're more yeah. social media management, but I expressed to them in our initial meeting, I was like, I want to do live. I need to get out there. I need to do live performances. I, that, that, yeah. That's that's my main passion at the end of the, you know. Right. So like the improv, is that you calling them, them calling them? That's or? them calling them. Really? Interesting. Yeah. And they've never done that before. Like They've that's never not done it thing. before. Ah. Like I told you, these guys are sharks. They're what Trump would call killers. They're okay. young and You're they're confident. ambitious like and All they're right. hungry. And I wouldn't ah. say yes to, I say no to almost everything. I'm the most skeptical guy in the world. If I don't yeah. like you, if I feel even slightly uncomfortable, I don't care if yeah. you're offering me a hundred million dollars. I just, Ugh, and I jump ship. Okay. So, all right. So now where do you, where does, uh, so you're going to go there. Yes. Um, how long is your set? You doing an hour set? Are you headlining these? You're headlining these. Yes, I'm headlining. I, I, I'm thinking 45 to an hour. 45 to an hour. Now, like I said, I used to do stand-up. Is this your first, is this your first headlining gigs? No, I've headlined before. I did the Caroline's Breakout. Um, I, I've, I've, okay. So Caroline's Breakout and Governors are the two shows that I headline. Now, in the past, I was always featuring, but... Uh, in one particular at the Funny Bone up in uh, Hartford, Connecticut, Tommy yep, Davidson yep. I was opening for. Tommy Davidson was 45 minutes late one night, an hour late one night. So I did that much time and it was fire. Sure, sure. sure. You know, uh, so, um, um, so yeah. Um, but You, you know, seem very I, excited. You seem like you're at this part where like things are starting to really rock and roll. Um, yes, and, and I've been wanting to get back on stage. So, uh and then this all just happened and uh, and I'm working so is this my your bar- first is this your first kind of consecutive run and first beginning yes. of getting back on stage and run wow yes. that's why you're all hopped up all right yes, this it is, is kind of exciting for you correct all right correct. cool beans man yeah and Jason reached around. out and wanted to talk. good for you yeah and I've been running I'm- around Manhattan you know doing every little thing any any you know do you every- do you do the do you do the Manhattan clubs cuz I would assume Let's just assume, yeah, not a lot of them would take you because of the Trump thing, right? Where they're so biased and they're right. so they're just they don't care about the funny. Like he just does Trump, so he's out. But well, I don't know that for a fact. I will. I will say this. I will say this. Um, in my act, I have an opinion. Like you know. You have an opinion. Yeah. Sometimes sure. it's overt. Sometimes it comes out overtly. And sometimes sure. it comes out not overtly. 
So right. when I'm in a, in, a, in an area where I know they hate his guts, absolutely, I will I will do the impression. I will do some jokes, but it will maybe be slightly altered, slightly to not make everybody walk out and throw you know vegetables. Right. Hey, at listen. Me. I know you don't like me. It's okay. Yeah. You yeah. don't like people. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's but, right but to I, hate. We'll hate. <laughs> <laughs> but I have a good relationship that I've built up over a long time with a lot of people um, yeah. in Manhattan. So even even as political as I am, um, um, and I've bec obviously become more political because, like I said, and do you do you do you? All right. Was so political. Do you? Uh, it's interesting. I just don't see. I I don't see you as like we haven't had a conversation. We're actually going to talk. I hate politics. So yeah. like you haven't really talked politics. Did you, did you find yourself being thrust into that world and now more uh, appeasing uh, that world because it's working? Uh, mm, or no, or you feel no okay. no because yeah, yeah. I've uh, okay. I'll give you my political journey. So. I was always from uh, up until about like the end of Obama's first term. Yeah. So like 2011, 2012, I yeah. was always kind of more on the, I guess, Democrat side, but yeah, I yeah. did notice, I noticed two things. Even as a kid, I said the Democrats always seem to have like this perfect solution to every problem, like this perfect cookie cutter puzzle piece. Boom. And I also noticed that the kids that I went to in school that were like openly overtly Republican, I noticed they always seemed to have their stuff together and they always got good grades and they always were smart. So I had those two things in my head. Then mm. Obama's first term happens. And, you know, I drank the Obama Kool-Aid. I'm like, this guy is the greatest. We and then I'm like, yeah. And then he got yeah. in and I'm like, whoa, whoa, huh? who, what, where, when, how? And then yeah. so by basically by Obama's second term, now I've switched. Now I'm a now I'm a Repub. Now I'm a Repub. Now I'm not like I'm not I'm not open about I'm not like Bill Maher, like a political comedian or anything. Right, but right, that's right, just right. how I personally feel. OK, right. So then so someone had to corner you. Someone had to corner you. You'd be like, mm -hmm. hey, man, this is what I am. Case closed. Right, 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 right. Gotcha, um, gotcha. And then and then Trump comes down the escalator and, you know, Hello. I mean, it was just I love I love entertainment more than politics. I love entertainment more than anything. And that man is an entertainer. He's oh, he's a politician. He's everything. He's also like I see him. He's the most inspirational guy ever because he doesn't let anything stop him. Like, forget even just politics. He's like a force of nature. He is the, mm. that's why I don't understand where people are like, he's such a negative, nasty, hateful guy. He's the most positive human being literally probably maybe on the face of the earth. That's why he's like, it's big. It's beautiful. It's like, they mock that, but it's like, no, he wants that. He, he, he speaks things into existence. And right, uh, right, 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 right. I know and, what you exactly say. Cause you're starting to see clips now over the internet. I just saw one the other day where he was talking about the Iraq war. Everything he said was going to happen or, or, or he said that happened and they said, no, has happened. Right. Or is happening. Whether yeah. you hate him or not, you're like, well, he did, he did say that. Was, well, he didn't say that. Was, he did say that was going to go down. Exactly. Like, hey, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. so I got it. I got it. So, in the end, if I can ask you, are you sure. um, is your goal to be the one hour special? The the um, do, you, do, do I want to be a, a movie guy, a sitcom guy? Uh, none of the above. You have something totally different in store. Um, well, what is you know? My answer to that is so I did stand up for ten years. Yeah, whatever. I was known in New York City, whatever. Um, then I started to do my own thing. Like you started podcasts, your own thing. And then mm. my own thing, you know, I started out when I did Trump. I did a video. I jumped in the East River. I was climbing trees in Central Park. We're finding ballots hidden in the trees. And next <laughs> thing you know, I'm at Mar-a-Lago shaking his hand. So what I would say to you is. Right. My what I OK, the one thing I want to do that I can tell you I definitely want to do is I always you want to be at his inauguration. That's what you want. Right, right, right. I want to do stand up until I die. OK, that's the one okay. thing that I want to do until I die. 
And okay. the funny videos, the impressions, whenever it hits me, yeah, boom, I come up with an idea, I post it, good. Um, do I want to be in movies? Is that a deal breaker? I don't need to be in movies. Do I need, do I want to be on television? Do I need, no, if it happens, great. But right. I kind of look at what I do as almost like, uh, like playing a sport. It's like, you don't know where the ball is going to come from. You don't know who's going to come at you. So I'm sort of just dipping, dodging, ducking, diving. And, um, but everything that I've been wanting has sort of just fallen into my lap as it's yep. happened. Like the yep. offer to be managed. Uh, guys, I know you want to manage me social media. Can you get me on stage? And now they're getting me on stage. And once they handle that part, because I'm not a business guy. I'm not a negotiator. I'm not a money guy. I'm not a numbers guy. I'm a creative guy. I can't, my brain just stops working when it comes to Same. technical stuff. So yeah, me too. they're handling that for me. And um, I want to address one other thing about Trump. Cool. When you said people are saying, oh, Trump is right now. Every I have my ear to the pavement. I'm out in the streets in liberal New York City imitating him. I'm in these elevators now doing the elevator show, which yeah, by the way, be. people ask me, how do you think of that? I didn't think of it. I was just drunk. <laughs> yeah. It was the day, and I don't even drink that much anymore, but it was the day right. of SantaCon where all the college kids dress up as Santa Claus. I went there to get Trump footage. That night I had an event with my girlfriend's social club, so I had to get a tuxedo. I'm a little a little buzzed in the elevator at Macy's. Uh, Trump or Biden? Abortion, yes or no? Uh, gay, how do you feel? Marriage, uh, 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 trans, when a three-year-old. Can I? And then that blew the heck up. And then um, you'll notice a lot of the, like, I, I, I honestly think I'm like, making some sort of an impact on like the world now because people are seeing, oh, that gay black guy loves Trump or that uh, whatever girl. So I'm like, people really believe the fake news that if you're black, you like this. If you're Asian, yeah. you like that. If you're gay, you like this. So me going out there with the camera is A, kind of penetrating the zeitgeist of thought and realizing, holy crap. And I think the, the whole Trump's, here, one last point. Yeah. Things are changing. The narrative that he's orange Hitler is literally crumbling. It's crumbling. No, it's I believe you're right. Especially with the video. Like I watched you go in the, the Shake Shack and I'm curious, like when you go into the elevator, I'm curious because you're not doing it. You don't have a follow up question with why. Yeah. You're just simply going. Yes. No, maybe. And I, I gotta be honest. I was fascinated going, Oh, okay. I didn't see that person as a Trump. I didn't see that that person Biden. Uh, okay, uh, it it is fascinating because a, a a young person going, oh, D Donald T. Whoa, I didn't, didn't yeah. see that. And I don't. And I think you're right again. Whatever you feel, Paul. That's an interesting look at that because you really are just doing a very naive, very. Uh, you're not coming at it as an attack. You're not coming in. It. They, I, they don't even. Yes, your dress is Trump, but they don't know. They, they have no problem saying yay or nay. Well, it, when I'm on the is, elevator, I'm not dressed as Trump. Oh, well, yeah, it's I very. Guess, uh, what? Yeah, when, when I interview people on the street dressed as Trump, I'm dressed as Trump. But in the elevator, yes. I, I even want to go undercover. Bro, it's a great. Yeah, that's a great idea, man. You should. Go I was like a little, crazy liberal because I was in the. Uh, yeah, this one guy thought I was a crazy liberal because I was in a, a Harvard sweatshirt. So in the elevator, I'm like almost undercover. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I like that. I, I hope to see more of that stuff, especially if you start hitting college campuses. I think that's a great what you just did in that elevator. Just yes, no, blah, blah, blah. This, that. Did, yeah. What do you think? I mean, it's just it's very it's very telling and it's really cool. So I think it's pretty awesome. So thank you. Hey, man. I wish you the best. Uh, I'd love to see you back on. Uh, can we hear how it went after? Are you going to film any of the shows in Addison? I'm, everything's going to be filmed, and I'm going to be Excellent. posting clips. And Excellent. I would love to come back on after and yeah. document my journey. And That's thank you so much for having me on. And um, yeah, and I'm no, I'm, no. You have such a you have such such a. A, a a pleasant way about you. I don't even. I don't. I don't know how to explain it. I think the listeners would know, and the viewers. But you just have this. I, I want to say it's almost like an innocence too. I really. You make me laugh. 
I've met you in person. I couldn't believe how tall you were. Holy crap. And <laughs> Everybody really says that. I don't know. I don't know what the distortion. Of I didn't realize how tall you were. Man. <laughs> People see me and they're like, oh, I thought you were a lot taller in person, which I don't know if they think they realize like it's not a compliment. So what are you <laughs> saying? I'm short. But I got to say, uh, I'm a fan. I like you a lot. And I'd love to hear back how Addison went. And um, we, you'll let us know when you come back. I can't wait to hear it. Absolutely. Oh, and one one more thing. I, I, wrote, I have a book out. Uh, it's called Make America Hardcover. And it's all my biggest uh, skits that got the most views animated together in a book. And I wrapped it all together in like a semi-autobiographical, yet funny, yet inspirational in a way, uh, little book. So Make America And you're going to be selling that? Okay. W say it again. I'm sorry. It's MakeAmericaHardcover.com. And so you're going to be selling these at the Addison Improv, of course. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Merch, 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 merch. Brother, have a good one, Jason. Take care, buddy. Take care. Thanks so much we'll for talk to you me. soon. Yeah, talk man. Soon. Knock him dead. Later. Yes, sir. Jason Scoop, everyone. We'll see how he did over there at the Addison Improv. He was, uh, he was super excited. I love when guys are just... I can see the excitement in his like that he's gonna be doing the improv and he's gonna I, I it's gonna be fun to watch his journey. We'll see how that journey goes and I'm rooting for him. He's a really good I call him a kid because I think he's a kid. I'm 56, he's 32. To me, that's a kid. So um all right, don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. One of the things I love doing on the tour is we bring Mike, the sound guy, and he films everything. And I invite you to check that out on the Patreon page. It's almost like documentary, offstage, hangouts, in the car, at the venues, at the theaters. It's really cool, and I hope you check it out on Patreon. It is Driving with Brew. We do all different things on the Patreon. And here's the thing with the Patreon. You can sign up just for one month and then quit at the end of the month. That's my mentality. Check it out now on Patreon, Driving with Brew. Okay, so let's go to a family, uh, a family friend of mine. I think we talked about this guy a long time ago. He's a, he's a kid. He's a kid. And uh, he goes to school. He goes to college. He's got a, like a little podcast, a little video thing he does. Um, I think we talked about it before, but, you know, he's from my town. I've watched his kids since he's little. And he's, I always say he's going to be a great entertainer. Um, and then we had a conversation. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to say it was almost two years ago, maybe longer. And he's like, Mr. Brewer, let me pick your brain. Um, and he started making some videos and, and then last night he tried stand-up comedy for the first time. Super excited for this kid. This is Luke Colonino. What's up, Luke? What's going on? Can you hear me, by the way? I want to make sure this mic is working. Yeah, no, I can hear you really good. Awesome. What's going on, Mr. B? What's Are up, you, you meatball? <laughs> <laughs> do you graduate this year? I do, yeah. I graduate in the summer. Um, so I'm, I'm you know, kind of winding down the college career right now. It's a and scary what, reality, but I'm ready. Well, you know, yeah, I mean, Kels is too. Um, <laughs> that's my middle daughter for everyone. So last night you did the stand up. First time I did. I did. It was. And had, um, how'd you feel? It's one of those things where, you know, because I used to act, I used to do, you know, the, the plays and whatnot. And it's uh, very similar to that. And like, I, I practiced this friggin' thing like a hundred times like i had it memorized to the and then you get up there and like don't get me wrong you know i did my stuff and um yeah. but it's like i always felt like i just missed like one or two jokes and so i like i listened to your advice don't get me wrong and i felt that i did well for it being my first time i got a lot of laughs upon watching it back yeah. but it's like I, it's that adrenaline rush of being up there that was friggin' killer <laughs> Yeah, it's it's totally different than the videos that you make, which are uh, what are the, what are those called again? What are they called? Lukewarm. Lukewarm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and I think there's a, and I, I think I told you a while ago. Out of the lukewarm takes, there's there's a lot of subject matter there that you could take 
and then create stand up pieces out of that. And then th- mm-hmm. that that all could could become one world. So you got the adrenaline rush when you get up, oh. and when it was over, how wh- how many how much time? I didn't watch the whole video yet. I watched. The- um, it's I think six minutes and twenty seconds. Like did it's it, a full recording. Did it feel like six minutes? Did it feel like fifteen? Did it feel like two? No, it felt like two. Yeah. Like I got up there like, cause so you're supposed to do like a, I think it's called a hard five or they, they call it something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I get up there and I, I'm, I like, look over at the clock. I'm like, holy shit. I have like <laughs> a minute left, dude. I'm like, oh, then I start rushing through this stuff. So it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like super, super fast, but I'm sitting there going, oh my God, I'm burning time. But, um. It was cool though, yeah. Do you think you're gonna be doing more of it? Yeah, so it's funny. So the guy that I do the lukewarm takes with, I actually went to stand up with him for the first time last week. Oh my god, I got something in my eye. Um, I went to stand up with him for the first time last week. He did a set, and I was like, "There is a zero percent chance I don't come back and do a set next week." So he gave a set right before my set last night. It was, I think, his second one. He did very well. And then I got up and I think I did very well. So it was cool. It was cool. So now when you graduate, right, I'm assuming you're going back to New Jersey? Were you no, I'm coming down to you. You're coming to Florida? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I'm going straight to, I believe, Miami. Why Miami? Um, As far as the content creation thing goes, it's it's like the L.A. of the East Coast. Everybody's moving down there. Um, I have just a lot of connections down in Miami. Um, and I also just like the Florida weather. That's my favorite spot on the East Coast. Um, Bro, it's nothing better, man. I'm telling you right I, now. I love I, hearing I, that. That's the I, best I, thing to I, hear. I'm telling you right now, I don't care what anyone says. It is uh, It is 70 degrees, clear even when it's cold, it's like, oh, God's 50 or it's 45. I don't ever want to see cold weather again. I can't. St- I, people underestimate the health value of being able to go outside 365 days out of the year. Oh, my God. Like, if oh, my God. If you could see the weather the past week, like we got we touched the 50s. And you had people walking around in shorts and a t-shirt. Like, they're like, this is the best. Yeah. Like, this sucks. Yeah, it sucks. It, it sucks. Does. It's not fun. It's not fun. It's like, I'm just miserable all the time here when it's, you know, like literally it has been cloudy for the past three weeks. Yeah. Like you get one day where you see the sun and everybody comes out and they're doing a powwow. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to do in my uh, – uh, when you say the content, so you're going to Miami, and what's the what's the goal there? What are you doing? You already so, got an apartment and all that? Uh, we're working on getting an apartment right now because I'm moving down there with the guy that I do the lukewarm takes with. Um, so you guys are going to try to pull something together as you as you move along? Yeah, we're he's you know my closest friend. Like I do, we do everything together. You know, we yeah. just get along very well, um, and we're very similar people. So yeah. when we go down there. The plan is right now, um, we want to make content, but we, we want to put it towards a more professional route. So we want to get into real estate and then kind of build a social media brand off of what we do in real estate. I, like, you know, Selling Sunsets? No. It's a TV show and, okay. and they do it. They, it's, it's, they sell real estate. Okay. It's very popular with a lot of people that watch, you know, that realm sure. of, of yeah. Uh, entertainment yeah but we want to do something similar and the reality is as you very well know we have no idea what the hell we're gonna do i love we're it. gonna get down there and we're gonna just do we'll and figure we'll it out figure out what works exactly and i think that's the exciting part about a new chapter is that that just kind of uncertainty of the future I love that. I love that you take chances like that. I love. I was super excited when you first started taking these chances, and I and I and I told you your parents are gonna. Your, your dad might have a heart attack, or your mom might yeah, have a heart attack. But I was like, let this kid fly. He's meant to fly. He's he's 
and he's gonna lay he's gonna do well he's gonna he's he's grounded he's fine he's not a maniac he'll be okay you'll have your days you're all the um and there's a lot of there's a lot of uh comedy clubs or uh, comedy areas in that whole east coast of florida there's fort lauderdale west palm beach uh, Miami has a co- uh, has an improv there. There's plenty of places to work out and do your thing, man. I'm super stoked for you. So when are you, when are you going to do stand up again? Are you doing it at this? Is this at the college? This place? Yeah. So it was, it's funny. My my one buddy, who's I love him, but he's out of his mind, and he was like, "You got to come do stand up one night." And I'm like, "No, dude. I don't have any material. Like, I got to kind of prepare for it." Yeah. And I went and watched him do his set last week. And I'm like, this kid is fucking crazy. (laughs) But he got up and it was so much fun to watch because he just gets up there and he doesn't care what anybody thinks. So he just kind of got up there, did his set. And I'm like, I got to do this again. So I'm going back next week, next Thursday. Me and my buddy are going to go back. We're all going to, you know, we all go out. We make a night of it. You know, we'll do the stand up and it's it's on the campus like on the actual school campus it's that's like pretty, three minutes from us that's pretty nuts so when you came off the stage i got two questions so when you came on stage how long that adrenaline rush last so that's the funny thing i like i get up on stage and i'm not nervous like i'm i'm you know i have the the nervous energy of course but i'm like not nervous i get off the stage and i'm literally like this just firing <laughs> but it was like it was it, it lasted for probably a good 10 minutes where i'm just sitting there <gasps> yeah it's pretty awesome and then it is it was cool out of someone your age i'm curious who do you i, mean, I know whom i know who my kids really like and all that who who do you who do you go man i want to be like so and so or like that guy that guy love that freaking comedian like do you are there are there a couple comics right now you're like oh that's the guy oh. you you number one yeah. a lot of no honestly like a lot of the shit that i model my my set off of just the mannerisms and stuff the whole reason that i do the entertainment is because of you which is a huge shout out because I think that you were honestly the reason that I went into a lot of the uh, entertainment that I did. Like, like I, I always think of this one memory where we were all just dressing up and you guys were over at our house and I were all running upstairs wearing stuff and, and or like even the trampoline where we used to just beat the hell out of each other. On the trampoline. <laughs> um, so you are a huge one. Um, okay. But the other one, and it's not even close with like any other comedians, is yeah. Shane Gillis. And, oh and my God, he's awesome! Friggin' kills it. Like he's I hilarious. remember, hilarious. I watched his stand up for the first time when somebody sent it to me. I literally almost peed on myself. I was laughing so hard. I love Shane Gillis. I, I, I'm gonna say he's one of my favorites. Right? Like, dude, he was kind of my favorite before his special it's got his comedian brian mckenna used to open for me and uh i mean still opens once in a while but he sent me a shane gillis uh, shane i don't know but he i don't know if you know this but he was on senate he he got hired by Saturday Night live and before he even got on they fired him <laughs> He's uh, so the, the woke morons uh and that that really that was part of my you know what this show it this is this is all madness and then he came out did you ever see the fireman sketch that he does oh my god let's <laughs> let's ditch this puerto rican flame it's it was, he he's brilliant he's, he's it's like it is brilliant. yeah i agree it's unbelievable and i love that he he uses a lot of history in his jokes i think that's just phenomenal that he's in incor- he's able to incorporate legitimate historical like happenings yeah. and just make them so friggin' funny yeah. or like really any of his bits about um you know his uncle with uh, down syndrome like my friends i'll be walking around and somebody will just go where you get that tea danny <laughs> do you are you um because all my kids i was i was uh to kill tony are you big yeah kid? oh my god tony hinchcliffe Yes. Oh, there's another big one, right? 
Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, my my roommate actually, he uh, he was kind of the guy that I walked in. I'm walk. I walked into his room. I'm like, what the? F- what are you watching, dude? Yeah. And he's like, Kill Tony. You've never heard of it. And um, I think the thing that put a lot of my friends onto it was uh, this comedian Cam Patterson, who you might be familiar with. He's the he, he got on there, and his first minute, he was like, you know, I'm not. I don't want to say because I might get canceled. Oh, the Rock. The ro- yeah, he goes, <laughs> rock. Yeah, I know tigers, but I like rocks. <laughs> yeah, 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 dude. That one, that one line that guy said is just that. It's everyone knows that. I didn't even know what was Everybody going on. Knows. I was driving around, and at one point, uh, you know, R- Rogan thought Kill Tony was on. He's like, "Hey, man, we filmed." Like, yeah, I showed up to town, and he's like, "Oh man, they're not filming this week." But when I started telling my friends, I killed because you know, I. He goes, everyone said, you know, I like rocks. Like, what are you guys talking <laughs> about? I like rocks. Like, what? Everyone I talked to, that's all they would say. I like rocks. What is that? What are you talking? I, that, that is, I won't compare it to uh, Chappelle's, I'm rich, man. But it's definitely gaining traction that this guy put out. I like rocks. It's really good. So cool, man. I'm just I, I'm hopped up for you. I'm excited for you. Um, I cool appreciate that. You're gonna be Thank like you. two hours from me. I'm in Naples. You'll be in, uh, and that's another thing. Even Naples doing comedy. So whatever. I'm excited for you. Let me know. Keep in touch. Let me know what you're doing. Um, I definitely will. I definitely will. And some of my following, uh, I'm sure your kids are following Luke. And uh, we'll put that all up for you. And what what is the Instagram and the t- and the TikTok? Is it is so it the Instagram? Warm? Yeah, it's lukewarm takes, like T A K E S. But yeah. um, yeah, yeah, it's friggin' fun, man. It's a lot of fun. I appreciate you know the kind words. And remember like said, this. Remember, I mean, this. hit me with it. Me and Barnaby are like this. Really <laughs> seems like you and Barnaby are like that. <laughs> <laughs> when you uh, sent me that video, I almost cried. <laughs> it's so funny. All right, Luke, enjoy your day, man. Much love to you. Tell your parents hello and uh, all the best. And I'm excited for you, kiddo. Have a good one. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me on. Late, later. Uh, Luke Colonito, this kid, always entertaining, has charisma, had that, you know, those, you know, those kids when you're growing up, you know, and you got your kids with it and you're always like, this kid's a little different. And he just, he's, he always has great energy. And that was always my concern. Like, I hope no one kills this kid's great energy. He was super creative. He'd always pick my brain. Hey, Mr. Brewer, blah, blah, blah. He just, um, I've always, I've always enjoyed having him around, his family around, um, so I, I'm always rooting for him and I wish him the best. And just like all of you would root for someone. So what we just did, the Barnaby. So we discovered, both our families discovered, and and Luke, everybody's Luke, every Thanksgiving, it's a tradition when I was growing up that March of the Wooden Soldiers would be on, for us, it was either Channel 11 in New York or Channel 9. And we watched it. Yeah, it's one of my all-time favorite movies, March of the Wind Soldiers, Lauren Hardy, and it's just uh, there's a there's a scene where, and you guys have to look it up. I sound like a maniac, but it, it, there's a scene where uh, Lauren Hardy going and they have to fake a marriage, and uh, or uh, and or so no, no no someone's gonna talk to the landlord. I'm I'm botchering this whole thing and the bad guys the landlord barnaby and the dopey the dopey one which i think is stan laurel he's like don't worry me and barnaby are like this me titan and of course something happens you're like i think you're more like this so every time that's just a low thing with me and luke so here's my little here's my little shtick for today I start thinking about this. To whom it may concern, in our lifetime, you you are always going to deal with people that go out of their way to try to make your life miserable. You're always going to deal with that. Could be family member, 
could be a neighbor, an associate, someone you you uh, um, try to work with, whatever the scenario is, to whom it may concern. And some of the toughest things with people that will try to make your life miserable are people that are bullies. Uh, and bully doesn't mean schoolyard bully. A bully is someone who makes threats, constant threats, constant accusations, constantly lashing out, constantly trying to lure you into uh, a battle. And also people that steal, steal, blatantly steal. They'll steal your time, they'll steal your thoughts, they'll steal your energy, they'll steal your money. And when those circumstances come, when those, when those, when those unfortunate circumstances come knocking on your door, I tell you, the more I get grounded with, with faith, God, and I talked to my wife, who's really good at that, um, on, on trying to ground me in those situations, because our emotions want to take over, and we want to, my natural reaction is always, oh, we're going we're gonna to fight. You, want, you poking me for a fight? Oh, we're going to fight. Let's fight. Um, and I don't fight to, to, to pin you. I, I, I fight to disable you. Like, you, you're never going to want to fight again ever with me or anyone else. But what I've noticed for the people that steal from you, from the people that attack you, from the people that um, go out of their way to try to hurt you in every way they possibly can. And I don't know the exact quote, but this came to me. Forgive them where they do not know what they do. And I had to really think about that one. Forgive them, Father, for they do not know what they do. And I had to really think about that. And are you able to do that with your enemy? Meaning the enemy that steals from you, the enemy that lashes out at you, the enemy that lies about you, the enemy that makes accusations about you, the enemy that just despises you, the enemy that just, maybe it's, they do not know what they do. They do not know what they do because just like anything else, if they're driven by control, they need to be in control, and if they don't have control, that's their addiction, and they'll do anything to get in control. They'll threaten you. They'll come after you. They'll make accusations about you. They'll, they'll do whatever they can to keep their control or steal because they're addicting to stealing. They love the feeling of taking. It's mine. Um, And you know, that one's, that one's always a tough one because when people steal from you, they're not just stealing from you. They're stealing from your children whose time is sacrificed while you're out doing something to make your family better, your life better. They steal from your wife, who does everything she can to balance out everyone's life while you're away trying to make a living, or he's away, whatever the circumstance, wife, husband, you know, husband, wife, whoever is out doing it. They steal from everybody. They steal from your nephew that you're trying to support, your niece that you're trying to support, but that's how blinded this, these people can be in your life. They get so blinded that their own self-righteousness, their own thrill to, to, to control, to steal, to, 
to point fingers, to lash out, to want to fight, to want to steal and take. They do not know what they do because they are controlled by another emotion. And that could be a demon in them. You know, we think demons are tails and horns and all that. Demons can be your emotions. Demons can be your lack of self-control. Your lack of self-control. Your lack of being silent and controlling yourself and not allowing your emotions and your desires to take over your actions. Because what those people end up doing, which is very hard to understand when you're in the moment, they self-destruct. They leave such a trail of fire everywhere they go that eventually the fire will come back and burn them badly. So it's not the easiest lesson in the world, but this one helped me tremendously over many circumstances. So whoever it may concern in your life that steals from you, that lies, that lashes out, wants to attack, wants to hate. They do not know what they're doing. Sometimes it's, they, they know what they're doing, but they're being driven. They can't control, just like a drug addict can't control themselves, just like an alcoholic can't control themselves, just like a demon can't control. You can't control yourself when you got that demon inside you. So they try to try to try to go with that. It's not easy. Forgive them for they do not know what they do. But to whom it may concern that is infiltrating your life it doesn't mean you won't back down. Not backing down is a whole different thing. You steal from me? You steal from my wife? You steal from my family? You steal from my children? You steal from my time? You, you, you took something that's not yours? That's foul. That's driven by a beast. I will never back down from a bully. I'll confront them. But in the end, forgive them. For they do not know what they're doing. And hopefully you'll have peace in your heart with that message. Um, let me know how that goes or what you think, or if you got something going on in your life where that helped you a little bit, hopefully it did. And then let us know, leave a message. I want to start hearing from you more often. Leave a message. I'd love to start hearing from you. Let's get these podcasts going. Let's get these interviews going. Let's get John on here. Let's get your talents out there because we're going to need to have a lot of entertainment this year. We're going to need to laugh hard because uh, it's going to get pretty kooky. It's going to get pretty kooky. Now we're coming into uh, the real deal of elections and all that jazz. Let's stay focused. Let's enjoy. Let's uh, spread love. Let's, let's do our very best to hold on to each other and keep us all in check. All right? Forgive them. They do not know what they do. You guys have a good one. We'll see you next week in the Greeniverse. Jim Brewer, and I got my own Patreon page, and hopefully you'll check it out. Live. 
comedy concert streamed once a month. Early access to the Bruniverse podcast every single week. And have bonus footage and bonus segments. I promise you I'm not going to let you down. Go check out my official Jim Brewer Patreon page, and I'll see you there. Dang, 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 dang,